I said before that one of my main goals for this daily video project is to challenge my assumptions, not just about the world, but about myself. And yesterday on day one, I already found out that one of my core assumptions about myself, that I've always been bad at math, that I never enjoyed math, was completely wrong. Now I don't even know why I had that assumption if it's not, if I got good grades, why did yeah. I think that? Math. Elizabeth enjoys math. What? I don't believe Maybe it. Maybe they saw something uh, you didn't see. I can't. I was 20 years ago. I guess I can't remember. That whole, oh, I'm just not a math person idea. That is the number one thing I need to change about myself. And when I say it, when other people say it, I hear it all the time. Like, ah, oh, you know, I never, I never was good at math. Ha ha, I can't add or subtract, whatever. Like people brag about being bad at math in America. This is a very American thing. They make light of it. They, they say, you know, oh, it's just a little self-deprecating humor, no big deal. But I don't think we should take it lightly. And I hate that I do it myself. I hate that I find myself doing that. I think we should take it very, very seriously. Sarah Mora Shields made a great video about this. Go watch the entire thing. I study math, I'm a math major. And I usually get responses like this. Oh, I'm just not a number person. I just, uh, just never really, you know, it's genetic. Miles Kimball and Noah Smith say the idea of math people is the most self-destructive idea in America today. And there are a whole bunch of interesting studies about this, like this one that did an intervention with a group of students and taught them about the evidence for intelligence being malleable. Students in the control group who were not taught about that continued to get bad grades. But the experimental group, the students who were taught that intelligence is malleable, actually improved their grades. It definitely seems plausible that if you think you're not a math person, you're more likely to give up before you even start. But if you think that you can improve with practice, then you will. But somehow, even after seeing proof that I used to be good at math and used to enjoy it, and even though I do believe that mathematical ability is changeable, I, some, I don't know, some small part of me still believes in that myth that I'm just not a math person. I guess that's one of those things that you can't change overnight. Just like self-confidence in general, you have to build it up, prove it to yourself gradually with practice. I really like the way Sarah Morris says it. Math is hard, but you can do it. It's not magic. It's a skill. So today I started making a plan for how to practice, how to prove to my irrational brain that it can be good at math and it can enjoy it again just as much as it did when I was seven years old. I have two main goals for this month. I want to improve my understanding and appreciation of math in general, higher math, you know, the creative stuff, the abstract stuff, the interesting stuff. But then at the same time, I also want to improve my computational ability, just basic arithmetic. And those are two very, very different skill sets. There's an analogy that I really like. It goes something like this. Arithmetic is to math as spelling is to Shakespeare. It's good to learn how to spell, but you can appreciate Hamlet even if you're a terrible speller. They're two very different skills at two very different levels. I know I'm going to struggle this month with finding the balance between those two skills, and I'm also going to struggle with finding a balance between actually learning and time spent making these videos. But it's okay. I'll figure it out. And I also wrote up a list, a list of my specific goals for this month. So one, publish a video every day to share my learning process like I'm doing right now. Two, publish a blog post every day to serve as a brain dump of all my ideas, questions, and to compile a list of resources, helpful resources for anyone else who's interested in learning this stuff with me. Three, improve my computational skills starting with arithmetic track my progress by taking pre and post tests, learn more about real math, the more creative abstract math, interview at least three mathematicians or, or at least people who enjoy math, interview people who don't like math, explore connections between math and my other interests like language, music, history, art, psychology, make a couple creative projects to explore mathematical concepts. So maybe like a small programming project, maybe just a bunch of silly drawings, I don't know, something besides the videos or the blog posts, something to get my hands dirty, literally or figuratively. Read math books, listen to math podcasts, watch math videos, really immerse myself in this interesting new world of math. And finally, track how much time I'm spending on all of this stuff. I also decided on a tentative work schedule and I'll keep adjusting this until I find the right balance, but for right now, I'm aiming for two hours on math practice problems, two hours reading about math more generally, two hours making my daily video, and two hours on other projects like a small freelance web development project I'm doing, um, and my running my Learn to Code LA meetup group, the programming meetup group that I started earlier this year. 
kind of takes up a lot of my time sometimes. And that's eight hours. But if I feel like it, I'm definitely allowing myself to do more work, but I would really like to carve out time for things like socializing and exercising and all the other stuff that I know is good for me. And also I really need to work more on making more in-person friends. That is still another big goal of mine. So, uh, and that's gonna take a long time. Anyway, so my first step is to see what do I know? What do I not know? How much math do I actually remember? And I never thought I would actually say this, but I am going to voluntarily take some math tests. <laughs> Unfortunately, I kind of ran out of time today, and now at this point I can either spend my evening taking math tests, or I can get groceries and get food so I won't have to have a, a jar of peanut butter for dinner tonight. But I do have a solution to make sure I don't procrastinate tomorrow. I booked a private room at the library, and at eight in the morning, I'm going to sit myself in that chair and treat it like a test booth, and I'm going to take math tests for the first two hours of the day. And if I find myself actually enjoying it, maybe I'll stay even longer. So I will see you tomorrow at the library.